a man who we've, uh, I've, I've enjoyed his work for many, many years, and I'll stop talking about him as if he's not sitting next to me. He is Don Cheadle, House of Lies, Showtime, fourth season finale, March 29th on Showtime. Good to see you, Don. Thanks, Rich. Good to see you, too. I man. love your show. I love this show. Thank you. Uh, why, why do a show like this for you in a career that... Academy Award nominated and all these other great movies. Why, why do House of Lies? Well, you know, when it came up, it was, uh, the question for me was why not do it? I love the script. Uh, David Nevins, president of Showtime, uh, was really behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, very supportive of the project. Uh, Matthew Carnahan created the show and Jessica Brzezinski co-created it with him. And it was just a great project and I thought you know it's a home game I'm 20 minutes away from my house that we see you shoot yeah, it here obviously and, yeah three uh, months out of the year to do something that's great great cast I had, there was just there was no downside it was it was hard to say no really yeah. Kristen Bell is in it great cast and who Kristen Bell is I don't she, know that princess pr princess Elsa oh the frozen chick yeah yeah she's pretty good <laughs> see I, I, my my oldest son oh no uh, well I said I'll tell this story All right. I think I, I, scared, I scared her off because I ran into her in, uh, and her husband, who Dax Shepard, who was on the podcast version of this show, with my son. Uh -huh. And I, I went frozen on the spot just because my son... You started singing? I did not do okay. that. Right. But I basically said, you know, my son thinks that you're a princess, essentially. And I think she wanted a restraining order from me on the no, spot. No, no, no. She no? may have acted like that, but okay. actually she makes us refer to her as her frozen character now. It, she's over House of Lies. And is that right? Now that the sequel is happening, which has never happened before in the history of a Disney movie, right? That's true. So <laughs> she's, her head is, you can't really talk to her now. Well, here's what we need to do, Don, uh, if I may wor workshop this Please. with you here on, on the Rich Eisen Show. We need to get Marty Khan into Frozen 2. Uh, How yeah. do we do that? I think we just, you just keep mentioning it. Right. And then there's a groundswell. And pretty soon the Facebook's den is involved. so loud that they have to do it. Don't you think that would be great? I do think that would be great. Because that would be, that would be shocking. Let's it, put it, it that it way. It would be. Just have Marty Khan show up in a suit in the middle of the <laughs> <laughs> And start consulting the yeah. kingdom on how to yeah. deal with their frozen problem. Correct. Like, let's, let's make sure that there's a different strategy Absolutely. on how to deal with this whole frozen issue. Frozen issue. Right. Yeah. Can't we thaw things? That's right. Why do we have to always be <laughs> sub-zero? And it's not about true love either. No, what is all about true love, Rich? I guess that's true. Let's, when let's, it all comes down to it, yeah. that Marty is in love with the princess, deep down. Yes, deep down. See, we're workshop. This is Frozen 2. And love thaws the, the ice. We saw that in Frozen 1. Let's take this off. We shouldn't do this during the this. Offline? We yeah, throw this offline? Because I don't want people to jump on. And... <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here with Don Cheadle here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, so Denver Broncos is your team, despite you being born in Kansas City. They're kind of both my team. Okay, so, so I have a lot of AFC turmoil. Yes, you do. When the seasons get, you know, when it gets later into the season. Okay. So Peyton Manning and what he's uh, returning to the Denver Broncos team that is yep. being run by John Elway right now. Does, yep. that, does that excite you? Or are you pleased? about this development? I think it's interesting, you know what I mean? Kubiak there now mm -hmm. and, and really great career as an offensive coordinator and done a lot of great stuff as a coach. Yeah, and he and Elway are tight. They go way tight. back. They're tight. I mean, we'll, we'll see. I think it's great what, you know, that Peyton Manning took the salary cut to really try to improve his team. Mm -hmm. So I think the spirit mm -hmm. is all there. But they just, I don't know, man. They always crush me in the in the... Late. Well, the they could also be ref referring to the New England Patriots and Tom Brady. It, it is. I think there's some it. psychic thing that they have to get over. Mm -hmm. There's some psychological hump that happens. And when I see these matchups, when I knew it was the Colts, I was like, oh, we're going to lose. I just felt like the story was going to not live up to what it should live. I feel like when they have to live up to the story, sure. it's, it's somehow it just doesn't work out. The story being Andrew Luck coming back and taking the care return. of The yes. return, Peyton's going to finally prove that the Colts were wrong and cutting him. You know, this, all of this sort of this storied thing mm. was supposed to happen and just doesn't. And then it just did it. not. It Again, just did not. I know. Spectacularly did not. And then one of the times that it did actually work was when Tim Tebow was the quarterback yeah. of the Denver Broncos. Yeah. Were you into Tebow time at the time? I was, I was, I didn't believe in Tebow time. I thought it was a, it was an experiment waiting to go You're south. You're like Elway, you took the Elway <laughs> like, approach yeah. to it. Yeah. This is not gonna continue to work, no doubt. Yeah. And now he's, he's out of football, trying to get back in. Well, is he out? I mean. Well, I mean, he was working with the Philadelphia Eagles this week, trying to work his way back I, in. I mean, we'll see, right? Yeah, I He's know. changed his throwing style, now he's not coming, he's like, Trying to figure out how to deliver it more quickly. I think he's throwing with his feet now. Actually, that is 
I, he's gone that's totally a new, radical. That's a new thing. Yes. Don't you think? Maybe he should play for a soccer team. Maybe he should play for, I don't know. I think we're, we're, Madrid. we're spitballing again, Don. I'm, I'm just, you're full of ideas, and I, so am I, and clearly that's what's happening right now <laughs> here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, we're going we're gonna to take a break here with Don Cheadle, and when we come back, we'll talk some NBA and also uh, a little bit of golf, because I know that you're... You I got a problem. Pack it up. Yeah, I got a problem. It's a problem? I think so. I like it. Don Cheadle is here on the Rich Eisen Show. We are back with... Uh, your phone calls as well, 844-204-RICH in 60 seconds on the clock. There's nothing Steph Curry can't do. A four-point play in the Warriors' blowout win of the Atlanta Hawks last night in what could be an NBA Finals preview in a way. Uh, Steph Curry of the Golden State Warriors, a, uh, the team of choice, of Don Cheadle, my in-studio guest. Is that true? You like the Golden State He's so ones? nasty. How I mean, that he? whole team is nasty, really. I mean, in the deep bench, and but he's just ridiculous. He's he's doing something else. I mean, he what he can do at, at, at his size, and I just love his confidence. Yeah. The, 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 the no-look passes, the no-look shots, by the <laughs> exactly. way. Exactly. I'll look when I jump, and then I'll figure it out. I mean, the confidence. Yeah, but I think it's great. I mean, he's probably came up so hard. I mean, having his dad play him so tough. I mm. think that just having to have that quick release because he's probably got everything swatted into the backyard every time he went up. I think it's just really made him a tougher player. And a kid from Carolina not getting offered by Duke or North Carolina, having to go to Davidson. That's the sort of... Yeah, got a chip. Like, well, I mean, and, and you take a look at somebody like, for instance, again, he's got a way to go before we can truly compare him, but Tom Brady... That fire that burns within. Yeah. He's chosen 199th overall. Right. And when he was at my alma mater at Michigan, he had a share quarters with Drew right. Henson, who really didn't yeah. amount to much in the, Henson, in the NFL. Yeah. That, that sort of fire, that's what I look for in a player to yeah. see if, how good he can be. Some, some pushback. You know, it's good to have it not all handed to you and have to really prove it over and over mm -hmm. to people. I think that's something that you can't. You can't teach that. You just have to have a chip. How, how often do you watch sports? How often do you just get to sit around and watch a game? Or well, You know, I'm in a lot of hotel rooms around the country with sure. a lot of downtime, and uh -huh. I'm always surfing sports channels. So right. I watch a lot of it. And I saw you on SportsCenter last night. That's right. On the Worldwide Leader in Sports. Yep. And it, uh, I guess, uh, you know, uh, back in the day, do you just watch Sports Center or now? And yeah, oh yeah, I still I still watch it. I still watch it. Well, you cool. know, and I still am, am very into it. And it's, it depends on where I am. When I was in South Africa and we were shooting Hotel Rwanda, I was watching cricket. And you know, I don't I don't even understand the game, but it was athletes doing something athletic. And, and so you were watching. People it? were fired up, and I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. And and have you watched cricket since? Have I you? have not, Rich. <laughs> I actually have not watched it. So since. it's out of it was out of necessity just to see some I form had of to competition. Watch some competition and like a lot it. of soccer too, a lot of football. Of course, Huge yeah, as they there. as they refer to yeah. it, the real yeah. word. For as it. everybody else around the globe refers to to yes. football. Yes. House of Lies airing Sunday, 10 p.m. on Showtime. Fourth season finale, March 29th. Don Cheadle is here in studio. What is your golf game like, Don? Walk me through I'm it here. I'm playing to about a 10 right now. Mm -hmm. I played with Jason Gore yesterday. Okay, we had a lot of fun. And. Uh, we didn't really bet because he's not allowed to do that. No, no. But uh, I, I did not beat him. Now, I didn't how beat much the pro. how much candy do you get? Do you get? I mean, uh, on the course. I mean, and by the way, first of all, congratulations on being you know confident enough to say your handicap on on yeah, television and wouldn't? radio. Well, Marshall Falk refuses to say his handicap. Is he sandbagging? Well, that is what I accuse him of doing. You've got to accuse him of that. Because he just wants to make sure that when he gets out there, right. he, if, if, if you are willing to offer him the candy, right. he will accept it. <laughs> and so he refuses well, to Well, he's got say, to manage it on the course. He's got, to, he's got to see what's happening before he says a number. Uh, correct. He, that is, but that's him. No. He's, he is definitely... Can, like I, can I talk to the camera for You a may talk to the camera. Marshall, mm -hmm. you have to post your scores and you have to say, I'm sorry, Marshall, there, there's your camera you have right to post your scores mm -hmm. and you have to say publicly what your handicap is. No sandbagging. No fair, Marshall. See, but he, he, he does have a little bit of the Marty Khan in him. He watches your show. 
He's a big fan of your show. Don't post your number, Marshall. <laughs> Do exactly right. what you're doing. You're perfect in every That's way. Right. <laughs> exactly. But, and, and he, yeah, I, we had Eric Dickerson on the show a few weeks ago, and he said that he got Marshall into golf and that Marshall really didn't know much about it, and he has just worked on his game nonstop to get where he is I, I, right now. I've seen him play. He's, he's good. He's, he's, he's not bad. So many of these athletes, they come to that game, and they don't have what mm -hmm. a lot of us have innately that, that don't come from a stadium sport or haven't played in front of 25,000 people. There's not a lot of that terror that we sometimes get over a shot. They're able to manage that. They're able to... I think because of they've been in the big stage and in the big moment so many times, they're able to sort of sh calm a lot of those voices down and just do it. And, and but uh, um, on the flip side of that too, Don, is if you think about it, all of these NFL players who would love, Tony Romo has been trying to get into the US He's Open. Good. He is very good. Yeah. But there's still that, I once even saw Dan Marino try to get into the US Open and he, he, he came shy of it and said that afterwards, he didn't think he had the concentration level that's to true. achieve it. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you're an NFL quarterback, as great as they come, right. where you're looking over a defense, and you need to concentrate to, you know, keep your head but on your shoulders. it's kind of in short bursts, right? Right. And you get downs off. There's no real downs off in golf. You don't get to sit down and right. go over tape and, you know, get talk to the, to the booth. You've got to be focused the whole time and kind of be managing your game the whole now, time. When you, do you know if you're on 14-15? that you have perhaps the round of your life going and think about it? How, how do you how yeah, do you handle that? That's happened. The, the, the lowest I've ever shot, and it was on a muni course, kind of a dog track, I shot 69. And it was the, the easiest round I've ever had. Yeah. I never took a practice swing. Mm -hmm. I didn't tee up the ball. You know, only on the par fives I teed up the ball. I never teed it up, and, and I never t took a practice swing. So why don't you do that every single time you're out there? I think that's the, that's the rub, <laughs> That's right? the rub. That just... you can't. There's, something, there's a psychological edge that these yeah. guys have that they've been doing it since they're four years old, eight years old, seven years old. It's in their deep muscles. That's, it's just not in our muscles like that. Do you think Tiger's ever going to win another major? I do think he has potential to win another major. I don't think he's going to go on a run. I don't think he's going to win four or five of them, but I think that if he... Why doesn't he just slow down his swing? Why doesn't he just hit three wood? He doesn't have to hit it. If he could stay in the fairway, he would never lose. His whole career, if he had just, I mean, he was the best scrambler ever, but if he could just stay in the fairway, every, he would never lose. If he didn't have to go after it like these guys go after it, and even if he goes after it now, he's not gonna touch a lot of these cats who are driving at 330, three bubble, these guys that can do it like that. Well, he might just, he might slip a disc if he, if he That's swings. That's what I'm saying, even, even speed. Even now, you'd think about it, right? I mean, if you're back, just mentally, just Absolutely. slow it down. Any, any sort of anticipation that you have, any right. sort of tension that creeps into your body before you you release is... Yeah, and then again, I have absolutely no cause to tell Tiger what to do. No. I'll tell him. Will I'll you do him. that? I'll call him. Do you want to address a camera Yeah, again? which one? Okay. Which this one right over here. Here we Tiger, go. Tiger, uh, call me. You have my number. <laughs> don't act like you don't. Uh, and I will straighten you out, and we'll get you back in fighting form. There you go. Masters champion Tiger Woods. Uh, he, just give him the green jacket now. By the way, that was a great... You, you have a, a sports psychologist in you. Okay. It was very good <laughs> right there. You can see how that... I saw that. I'm going to get him back. Yeah. You, you can just, see that. It's done, as a matter of fact. I think it just happened. I, I, feel, I feel that I, deep inside. I feel that moment right here, too. Yeah. Don Cheadle, House of Lies. Uh, the, your next project involves Miles Davis, called Miles Ahead. It's in post-production right now. Directing as well as co-writing? And are you Miles yeah. Davis yeah. in it as well? Yeah. What? Too many hats. Well, it's a heck of, but it's a heck of a project that you've yeah. got going on here. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, uh, people have seen it and, you know, are responding positively to it. So Just, I'm it, hopeful. It's, it's his life and how he got into to music? No, nope, it's, it not, it's not a biopic. It's not a cradle-to-grave story. It, okay. it takes place uh, in a couple of uh, days during his life when he actually wasn't playing. Mm -hmm. And I uh, was trying to find his voice and find out how to come back. And it's, it's, it's an entertaining piece that's not trying to... Uh, sort of uh, crack the code on his entire life. I think a lot of these biopics fall into that sort of trope of 
and then he mm -hmm. met, and then the, it's not chronicling all the events of his life. It's really a visceral story that involves a lot of music and is just a very creative telling, I believe. Uh, and uh, I'm, 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 like I said, a huge fan of House of Lies and of yours and everything that you do. I, I will definitely see that. Anything you do, I will see. And Thank I you, appreciate man. you coming on the show. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Please come back anytime. I will. Please come back anytime. Also, follow this man on Twitter at I am Don Cheadle. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate it. Uh, Don Cheadle, um, Showtime is where House of Lies can be found. I also, uh, you can watch it on demand. Fourth season finale, March 29th, right here. Do we want to give a quick update on uh, some of the scores? Yeah, right now going UAB on? Yeah. Uh, leads Iowa State 31 28 at the half, and Whoa. Notre Dame up two, 41 43, with just under 14 minutes to go. You're nervous, Brockman? Your, bra your bracket is hangs in the balance here. There's, there's He's got still, Notre Dame as a final 14, 14 minutes left. Really? Oh, that's going to be, it's going to turn out to be a blowout. I yeah. mean, another 10 minutes, it's going to be. Blowout. You think so? Yeah. And you think Kentucky goes the whole way? What do you think? I, I, I think they have the best chance to, no right? No doubt. I think so. I ch I've chose them. I do. Glenn, Glenn chose them. Yeah, well, that's true. I, although I did I say, say I did say yesterday that I thought that there is a potential upset lurking and it could be them. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to, I'm, I'm not going to put any money down on that. No. Well, I, I, I wouldn't even know what you're talking I turn into unfrozen caveman lawyer when I hear about money and the, <laughs> N the, the NFL mandates. What does that, that mean? Let it go. Little, oh, yeah, let it you go. You can't even talk about it, right? Let it go. That's right. Thanks for coming in here, Don. Appreciate oh, it. Glad to be here. House of Lies on Showtime. Season finale, March 29th. You can watch it every Sunday night at 10 p.m. Eastern time as well. Don Cheadle here. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.